music and I have a long history. It helped me through a lot of uh, uh, bad times and through a lot of good times. And uh, I just slowly started collecting records and now I'm surrounded by tons and tons of music. But 15 or 20 years ago, when I would go to clubs with my friends, I always got, you know, kind of jealous of them having fun because I'm night blind and I couldn't see anything. So I was sad that I couldn't be involved. I was always propped up against the wall, just listening to what the DJ is playing, what he's gonna play next. And I thought, I can do that. Hi ladies. Hi Victor. Welcome to my DJ booth. I got my record player, my laptop, headlamp, and my records. That's my setup. My DJ setup is very unique to me. Every bar is different, so I have to really memorize where things are placed because I don't see them because it's dark and I'm night blind, and it's very hard for me to navigate. But when people are dancing, there's a certain energy that everything around me just kind of stops, and there's a certain kind of magic that happens that really has a special place in my heart. And it turns out there's also a special kind of magic that's happening in my head. Because the more I use my ears, the more my brain is changing. That's neuroplasticity in action. To understand more about how neuroplasticity actually works and how it can help me even further, I've decided to travel to the University of British Columbia to meet Dr. Lara Boyd, one of the world's leading experts in neuroplasticity because I want to know how to have the healthiest, most supercharged brain possible. That's exactly what we try to study here. We're not studying brain disease, we're studying brain health and how do we preserve it for as long as possible. I'm here because I want to find out how neuroplasticity can help me with my learning difficulties, with my retinitis pigmentosa, and even with my everyday life. And I couldn't have come at a better time because right now is an incredibly exciting time in the study of the brain. Come on, rocket. <laughs> Lara and her team's lab is amazing. It's still a fun and new state-of-the-art technology to untangle the mysteries of the brain. We've learned more about the brain in the last 10 years than in the previous history of humankind. We thought the brain was static, that it really didn't change after maybe puberty. And then data started to emerge in animal models and then also from imaging studies showing that the brain is changing. It was so exciting. It, it literally just lit my hair on fire. Questions about our ever-changing brains are at the heart of Dr. Boyd's research. So some of the outstanding questions that we have is how do those changes impact upon behavior and your ability to behave in daily life? And one of the best examples is by looking at how your activity actually impacts upon your brain structure. So there's some wonderful studies showing that people who read Braille actually have larger areas of brain devoted to the sensory areas of their fingertips, which is a direct result of all of that sensory input that they are actually gaining when they're reading Braille. This is so exciting. It's evidence that the brain can grow and change and heal. And I'm just blown away by the power of neuroplasticity. And even more exciting, Dr. Boyd has offered to take an MRI scan of my brain so that I can see what my brain actually looks like. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. But another thing I'm wondering about is, what can we do to help our brains change? Unfortunately for all of us, there's no drug that facilitates neuroplasticity. So behavior is the single largest driver of neuroplastic change in your brain. And so then the question becomes, how do we shape our behaviors? How do we make good choices in our lives so that we're always shaping our brains in a healthy way? And that's where we really come back to things like exercise as it seems to be a key piece here. Another piece of that puzzle is sleep. It allows the brain to, to strengthen the memories that you've made, what we call consolidate them. Practice is the other thing. The wonderful example is, you know, learning to play the piano. There's really no shortcut around just putting in the work in order to accomplish that particular task. Mm -hmm. 